Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. I'm Chris Dayhut. In this video, we're going to take a look at the tool length measuring sensor and the pipe part height measuring sensors utilized in this automatic tool changing system for my CNC router. The Centroid Acorn controller has a variety of ways to deal with uh, touch sensors or tool length measuring probes, etc and uh, they provide a number of macros to help facilitate the process. Um, they have uh, suggestions for devices you can purchase uh, and so forth. I myself like to have a lot more control over the process so that I can tune things to work the way I want them to, uh, to the finest of details. This is one of the common tool length sensors or pipe part height measuring sensors that you can buy off of Amazon, uh, eBay, and a number of other sources. They cost a couple of dollars. Um, as you can see, I purchased one, and uh, frankly, I thought it was going to be something a little better than it was, but realistically, it only costs a couple dollars, so I got exactly what I paid for. Uh, what I really don't like about it is there is no compliance, mechanical compliance, built into the device. If the tool comes down on it, uh, with any force uh, before it can stop moving during the measuring cycle, you have just broke your tool. Um, for me, that's just unacceptable, especially with some of my carbide drills measuring only 12 thousandths of an inch in diameter. Um, you know, it, there's a good probability I'm going to break a lot of tools with that sort of touch sensor. So we're going to look at uh, uh, my adaptation of how to create and uh, have a good tool length measuring sensor that is compliant, as well as a part height measuring sensor, which is very crude, very simple, but highly effective. As I do with many of my creations, I start out in Autodesk Fusion 360 and uh, set about creating what it is that uh, I, I want or need. Uh, in this particular design, this is the tool length measuring sensor. Uh, and this device right here is uh, a very small linear slide. It's got about a one inch travel, something to that effect. It's very minimal, but perfect for this application. And I salvaged a number of these off of a piece of industrial junk. Uh, it was somebody else's creation that failed miserably, and he offered it to me, so I got a bunch of components off of it. Uh, including the air cylinders that you see on some of the other devices in this tool change system. But nonetheless, the design worked around this linear slide. Um, I do not know the manufacturer. There was no markings on it, so I had to reverse engineer all the mounting holes and so on. Um, this piece here is nothing more than a bracket to mount it to the table. Quite simple in nature, mounting holes on the bottom. Uh, there are a couple of tapped holes back here that mounted to this portion of the rail. I had to drill and tap a couple of holes on the side for mounting the spring. And then this component here is the actual contact plate of the touch sensor. Uh, overall, there's really uh, the only critical component on the whole thing is this piece and the flatness of this surface. Uh, relative to the table. Uh, the other thing about this uh, tool length measuring sensor is that uh, because it's a conductive sensor, I had to isolate it from the table. So in mounting, I'm using two quarter 20 nylon screws here, and then uh, a piece of uh, styrene plastic shim stock uh, underneath it so that it's electrically isolated from the machine tool. And then I've got a ground wire or a conductor, my probe connection wire, uh, attached at uh, either this point or somewhere up front here. Uh, but nonetheless, I just utilize a slide, a spring to hold it up tight against the stop, the over-travel coming down, well, it'll, it'll simply bottom out on these surfaces. Uh, but it works brilliantly simple. Machining it was quite simple. Started out with a piece of angle aluminum here. This was a piece of uh, tool steel that wasn't hardened yet. And I just whittled away what I didn't want and left what I did and drilled and tapped a couple mounting holes. Quite simple in design, quite simple in nature. In this segment, you get to see the actual tool length measuring sensor with all the components fully assembled, machined, etc. 
Uh, you can see how the probe wires are connected to it, the springs, the slide, uh, the actual contact surface you can see has been uh, lapped very smooth, very flat. Uh, setting it up, I was very fortunate in that I got it very parallel to the machine's table so that I get consistent measurements regardless of where the tool contacts uh, the contact surface. Um, the other thing of, of note here is that uh, this does solve the problem of compliance uh, wonderfully. I've taken a 12 thousandths diameter drill, uh, flew into it uh, at speed, and it holds up great. The reason for the extreme importance of this tool length measuring sensor, one, obviously you want that measurement to be accurate. That is very critical to uh, machining accurately with the tooling. Um, but in this system, I'm holding the tool in a collet chuck. This is not a V-flange or a V-shaped tool holder uh, system that will repeat. Uh, so as each time that tool is loaded into the spindle, it is not necessarily projecting out of the spindle the exact same distance. Now the tools do have that plastic ring, uh, so you would think I could be repeatable with it, but it's simply not true. Um, and uh, frankly, the tool is transferred loosely from the magazine over to the actuator that tightens the nut. At that point, of course, the tool is tight by the time we come over and measure it, but the tool could move slightly during that transit process. Now here you can see how the process actually works of measuring. You'll see the tool come down at a very high feed rate. It'll find the sensor, uh, overshoots, and that was why I'm so critical of needing and wanting that uh, compliance. That way I can be efficient in the tool length measuring. I retract the tool and then come back onto the sensor again at a much lower feed rate for a much more precise contact point and uh, reducing that overshoot time, thus reducing the overshoot distance. So I get very, very good repeatability. Uh, frankly, it's been uh, repeating less than a thousandths of an inch uh, in all my testing and in practical world as well. It's, it's been cutting my uh, isolation v-grooves very, very consistently. The wizard made it real easy to set up the input. Uh, I just selected the uh, probe section and uh, told it which probe PLC input number I was using, and, and it's number five, as you can see on the screen. Um, and I believe it's also very important to set the probe type. Uh, in this case, this type of probe is a conductive probe. It doesn't have an internal switch of any sort. Uh, and realistically, the rest of these settings are more important uh, for using uh, this sensor with uh, the centroid macros. I'm writing my own, so all these other settings really don't have a big effect on what I'm doing with it. And just to keep things consistent, I also went to the tool touch off configuration and of course set that to input number five and also set it as to a conductive type. And that way I know however that probe is being addressed, uh, or my tool length sensor or the part height sensor, however that's being addressed, uh, Centroid knows that it's a conductive sensor and it's on input number five. The macro for measuring the tool length is uh, fairly straightforward. It's not a very long macro, um, and I'll just walk you through it real quickly here. Uh, just got a few notes at the top. Um, using G58 as the work offset to define the X and Y uh, center of the tool length measuring sensor. Um, I'm going to establish a few variables here that uh, are used to define the Z positions I need, the feed rates, um, and then record the current active work offset because I want to I'll be switching it to G58 um, but I need to get back to whatever uh, the user was originally using uh, prior to the macro running. Uh, here's the typical bypass to get over uh, for graphing and, and uh, uh, buffering and so forth. Um, I'm going to validate the tool number because I need to know uh, the tool number in order to know which offset number to write the data into. So that tool number that is currently active has to be somewhere between 1 and 11 because that's all my magazine can hold. Uh, if it fails that test, it'll uh, abort the operation and it'll just kind of stop the program at that point. Uh, now we're going to prepare for the actual tool measure. Um, 
we've got to this uh, line number, so all is good. We're going to switch to the fixture offset. Make sure the spindle is turned off uh, with an MO5, and then I'm going to loop here until I get a zero speed from my VFD. Thanks to the folks on the Centroid forum for helping me uh, get my uh, VFD configured to give me that signal. Um, so anyhow, we do that, uh, verify that it is uh, zero. Uh, then finally down here, I'm going to cancel any tool length compensation to make sure nothing is active as far as uh, that could alter my Z position. I'm going to home Z axis, and I'm going to reset Z zero because I want to know the true distance from the actual home limit switch position down to uh, the sensor. I'm going to go into absolute coordinates, wrap it to X and Y zero, which is the center of that touch sensor. And then uh, we're going to wrap it the Z axis down uh, to about 200 thousandths above the sensor. And that's an approximate number uh, that's dependent upon the tool lengths themselves, but it's close. Uh, then we're going to measure the tool and write the offset. So we're going to move uh, relatively quickly uh, on this motion here until the probe contacts at a high feed rate. Um, if it's also uh, going to be further doing some checks that uh, it has to be touching that sensor within a certain Z position. Um, otherwise, perhaps the tool is broken or something else is wrong. So there's a, a error checking in there for that. Uh, once it touches, we'll back off our hundred thousandths, come off the sensor. Now I'm going to come back down and retouch the sensor at a much slower feed rate for a very precise measurement. Uh, we'll copy the z-axis position that was contact uh, that was captured at the contact point into a local variable, copy the t-code into a local variable, and then write the offset value to the offset number uh, that is equal to the tool number. That's it. Quite simple in nature. Uh, and that ends that measuring thing. Uh, then we're going to clean up a few details. We'll go into incremental mode uh, and get z-axis home. Uh, Go back to absolute, switch back to the original work offset, and here we're basically done at this point, and the macro is completed. Moving on to the part height measurement, I added a button on my VCP uh, using, I believe it's a stock uh, descriptor, auto Z to plate. Um, I might have created that button, I can't remember. Uh, that runs a macro that will position uh, the tool over roughly the area of the workpiece, basically at the parts X and Y zero. Then it's going to prompt you to move the sensor under the tool, press start, and then here we'll watch it come down fast, overshoot, back up, and touch accurately, and then retract. And that's the part height measuring sensor. Very simple. The macro for uh, measuring the work height is very, very similar to the tool length measuring macro. Uh, we're going to start out setting some local variables uh, with some Z position values, feed rates, uh, current active work offset, and uh, we're going to uh, also uh, put into the local variable the actual height or thickness of my uh, very crude uh, work offset sensor height. Um, from there, we'll do our typical checks to bypass for graphing, etc. Uh, validate my tool number. I do need to know the tool number because I need access to its offset value in the calculations for the G54Z uh, work offset height. Uh, we'll do our preparation by making sure the spindle is off and staying in a loop until it is confirmed to be stopped. Now we're going to make a preparatory move to get uh, in position over the workpiece. So we'll switch to the work coordinate system that should be used for the workpiece. Um, we'll make sure that the existing work offset value is zero. We'll go to absolute mode, rapid to X and Y zero of the current workpiece. We will uh, copy the T code value. Uh, into a variable and then convert that variable into a matching system variable number so that we can write to it later. Uh, we're going to copy, I'm sorry, read from it, read the uh, actual offset value. Uh, then we're going to copy that in, offset value into a 
local variable. We're going to rapid position uh, from home down to about 200 thousandths above the sensor, and uh, that is an approximation at this point. It should not touch. Uh, we'll preset the variable 100 to 0, and then we're going to um, uh, place a message on the screen telling the user to place the sensor under the tool, and then to continue, he's got to press, he or she has to press start to continue. Uh, now we'll go through the measuring process. This is very similar to what we did with the tool length measuring. We'll come down to a Z position, doing the same checking with this command, uh, where if it does get to that position, something went wrong, so we'll have to terminate and uh, display a message. Uh, once there, if all went well, uh, we'll back up a hundred thousandths incrementally, go back to in absolute mode, We'll come back down to touch the sensor again at the same Z position. Um, and we're going to do it at a much slower feed rate so we get an accurate reading. We'll record or capture, we'll record the captured Z position into variable 111. Uh, we'll perform some calculations here dealing with uh, taking away the tool length and the sensor height from that measurement and store it 116. And finally, we will take 116 and write it into 2701, which is G54Z's work offset height register. From there, clean up a few things, home Z axes, back to absolute, switch back to the original work offset number, and then these last two lines really don't do anything. They're just placeholders uh, for decisions further up in the macro. Well, that should pretty much wrap up this video. It ran a lot longer than I had planned on, but uh, I did want to go into enough detail to uh, enlighten you a little bit on how I did things. Uh, be sure to see and watch the other videos that I have on this automatic tool changing system. Uh, perhaps you can incorporate something similar on your own machines. I'm Chris Dayhut for Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.